The Jets lose one of their top defensive linemen for the season, but there are ways for the team to work around the absence of Jermaine Johnson. We'll discuss them today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Tuesday, September 17th, 2024, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Thank you so much for making the show your first listener, first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out, helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Well, today we're going to be talking about injury news, and unfortunately for the New York Jets, it is not positive injury news. It was not unexpected. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, in a social media post on Monday, confirmed that he has been diagnosed with a torn Achilles tendon, and MRI confirmed it. It was what the Jets were fearing in the aftermath of Sunday's game. The Jets beat the Tennessee Titans, but Johnson left that game after suffering an injury. He actually was carted off the field. If you saw his reaction, and you saw the reaction of his teammates, you knew that it potentially was going to be a very bad injury. So unfortunately, the Jets will need to play the rest of the season without Jermaine Johnson. And, you know, before we get into any of the impacts on the team, this is going to have reverberations for the team. I just can't stop thinking about how horrible I feel for Jermaine Johnson, Uh, you know, a kid who really worked hard, uh, showed, showed tremendous improvement between year one and year two, turned himself into a player, was living his dream. And, you know, whenever an injury like this happens, especially to a younger player, um, you know, it's devastating. You just hope that he can recover. You hope that his rehab goes well. You hope he's back on the field playing at a very high level for the New York Jets next season. Um, you know, it's always tough. Football's a game where there are a lot of injuries, uh, but especially for a player like Jermaine Johnson, who's worked so hard to get to this point, it really a tough thing to stomach. You know, his season ending, you know, less than two games in, into, the, into the start of it. Uh, t- tough blow for him. And look, a, a big loss for the New York Jets. Jermaine Johnson was the one of the, of the defensive ends who played a big role on this team last year. He was the one who came back. The Jets traded John Franklin Myers. They let Bryce Huff go to Philadelphia. And a year ago, Jermaine Johnson, you know, he may not have been the best pass rusher. He may not have been the best run stopper uh, on the Jets defensive line, but you know, he may have been the most complete player. Seven and a half sacks, played excellent run defense, and led the Jets among defensive ends in, in their snap totals. And again, this year, you know, he was the, he was the guy who got the most snaps uh, on the defensive line. So these snaps are now going to go to guys who are less talented, you know, and there, there aren't really a lot of great options for the Jets right now. You know, Michael Clemens has already kind of seen his snap share increase, and I don't think he's played all that well in the early going. You know, Tack McKinley, the guy's – he's Tack McKinley. I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say about him. Yeah, he looks great if you put him against a bunch of borderline practice squatters in the second half of preseason games, but first two weeks really has not looked that great. Uh, Braden McGregor has gotten some action in the early part of the season, and – Look, I, I think Braden McGregor could potentially be a good player one day, but his his game needs a lot of work. Again, you know, you put him in the preseason against you know borderline practice squad players, his physical talent will take over. But he's not a guy, you know, whose game is refined enough to be playing against first team offensive linemen and have success at, at this point of his career. A Jets defensive end group that a year ago was very good and very deep. He's looking very thin right now. Now, Will McDonald, of course, did have the three sacks in that game uh, on Sunday against Tennessee, although, I mean, let's be honest, two of them, one of them was uh, of the three sacks. One of them came on a play where he was a spy and tackled Will Levis when Levis took off. And look, that's big job. That's McDonald's job on the play. If you're the spy, your job is to make sure the quarterback can't gain anything if he runs. But that's different from being an offensive lineman. The second sack was on the play where Will Levis rolled the ball to the Jets. Where McDonald, I guess, because he was like in the area, got credit for the sack, and I think actually got credited for a forced fumble. The third sack was good, though. You know, the third sack he beat his guy, uh, but still, like even if we think Will McDonald is going to be a player, there's some lack of depth right now for the Jets' defensive end position, especially without Jermaine. And I think all eyes are now going to turn to the man who's not there, but the man who could make a big difference, and that's Hassan Reddick. And I don't know that there's anything that could potentially drive the Jets to try and proactively re- resolve this Reddick situation faster than an injury to Jermaine Johnson. Because if you put Hassan Reddick back on this defensive line, suddenly, you know, things kind of slide into place. You know, you, McDonald can be your number two pass rusher. You know, maybe you don't love Clemens, but you can live with him. You know, you, you feel like Reddick can produce for two worth two guys, maybe. Uh, suddenly it doesn't look so bad, but that's contingent on this thing 
the, on there being a solution to this thing. And I mean, it's not clear at this point that Reddick's going to settle for anything less than a long-term contract extension. I mean, the thing with Reddick is like, I don't think Reddick's behaving very rationally right now because I don't think a rational guy would be racking up, you know, at this point, close to $4 million in lost, lost money between the fines and the game checks he's not collecting. Um, so I don't know how, how this resolves, but I think that, you know, at this point, if it didn't already, it behooves the Jets to try and find a solution to this thing. But, you know, this, this cuts deeper. I mean, again, this is Jermaine plays about 70% of the snaps. You know, we know Salah rotates guys in and out, but, you know, Jermaine plays a lot. And these are, these are, these are just snaps that are going to go to lower caliber players until Reddick returns. And the other aspect of this is that Jermaine's a complete player. And one of the things I've always said about Jermaine is that, you know, I don't think he needs to be a 10 to 12 sack guy to be a very effective player. I don't think he needs to be a 10 to 12 sack guy in order to justify the late first round pick the Jets invested in him or, you know, they traded up. So I guess whatever the second and third round pick they traded up to get him because he he can play the run effectively. And this Jets defense, which, you know, the first week really struggled against the run. They were better in week two. Um, and, you know, like I know people are going to look at the stats. The, the run stats don't look so good in week two. But take out the Will Levis scrambles, take out you know the the, the touchdown they scored on the, the Calvin Ridley handoff. Jets against the running backs week two, the numbers are actually pretty good. Now the overall numbers are, are skewed because Levis had some scrambles uh, against the run, but uh, the Jets like defense actually played better against the run in, against Tennessee than they did against San Francisco. That said, I mean Jermaine's a big part of the run defense, so this is a guy who's a really complete player, a guy who maybe a little even though he made the Pro Bowl last year, maybe a little unheralded and how important he was to making sure this defense works. And that's especially true when you don't have, you know, John Franklin Myers on the team anymore or Bryce Huff. You know, where's the pass rush going to come from? I mean, hopefully when McDonald continues on the trajectory he showed week two, but even that, even then, I mean, that's Will McDonald's only one guy. Um, so the question, do the Jets, you know, how hard do the Jets push to get this Reddick situation resolved? The Jets, Jets haven't shown any willingness to move at all on this. And I think that that's, going to have to change and you know you hope that there's some sort of middle ground where the jets can resolve this thing without you know giving reddick the farm and uh, but uh in this situation you, you'd say that on some level this has to strengthen hassan reddick's hand because the jets right now are looking at giving a lot of snaps to the likes of tack mckinley and Braden mcgregor you know, one of these guys is you know, like mcgregor i think could at least develop into a good player but he's not there right now and I'm not sure it's going to happen at the time frame the Jets needed to. Tack McKinley, I mean, he's any snap he's getting is honestly just not going to be a very good snap right now. Um, so, you know, there we'll see what happens with the Jets, but I, I do think this is an appreciable loss. I mean, I think anybody, anytime you lose a player, first of all, you know, eats up 70% of the snaps, but also a guy you can play on three downs. It's not a guy who, not a guy like Huff who, you know, Jets weren't comfortable playing on, on early downs, on rundowns because he doesn't play the run effectively. Is a guy who you can you can put out there at any point, and you know he you you know on early downs you can play him you can have him set the edge, but on passing downs you can kind of kick him out wide and you can you know, have him play from a stand up uh, you know rush linebacker role, uh, you know a tough loss. But more than anything, you know I, I think a tough loss for the Jets. But uh, more than anything, I just feel bad for Jermaine. It's going to be a long road back. I hope he makes it. Um, and we'll be here rooting for him in 2020, uh, 2025. But in twenty twenty four, Jets need to figure out a way to work around him broke around his loss. And I don't like that Jets podcast. We're going to talk about how some of the guys who are already on the team could potentially help uh, the Jets bridge the difference. And they don't, they don't all play defensive end. How did the Jets replace Jermaine Johnson without adding a defensive end? Well, I'll explain that continuing here on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Jets. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Hims. You know, the only thing worse than losing your hair is waiting forever for it to grow back. That's why you need Hims, and you can start seeing your hair grow back in as little as three to six months. Hims provides access to a range of hair loss treatments that work, all from the comfort of your couch. Hims makes treating hair loss simple with doctor trusted treatment options and clinically proven ingredients that can regrow hair in as little as three to six months. They offer personalized chewable oral spray and serum treatment options so you can find what works best for you. The process is simple and 100% online. Just answer a few questions and a medical provider will determine if the treatment is right for you. And if prescribed, your treatment will be sent directly to your door. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on NFL. That's HIMS.com slash locked on NFL for your personalized hair treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on NFL. Results vary based on studies of topical and oral minoxidil. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. 
Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. Big shout out to you every day. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets with new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. Unfortunately, today we're talking about an injury the Jets have lost. Defensive end Jermaine Johnson for the season. Johnson confirmed in a social media post on Monday that he has suffered a torn Achilles. MRI confirmed it. It's what the Jets feared uh, after the game Sunday after he was carted off the field in their win over the Tennessee Titans. And Johnson's a, a very important player for this team. Um, you know, the top defensive end on the team with Hassan Reddick out. Now the Jets will need to figure out how to navigate life without a premium player at a premium position. Now, one way they can do it is, you know, by improving the defensive end position. And that could be, you know, internally with Will McDonald continuing to produce after a three sack game on Sunday. It also could be, you know, figuring out a way to get, get Hassan Reddick onto this team. I mean, uh, you, you just wonder when Reddick is going to show up, if he is going to show up. If he does, that goes a long way towards bridging the issues, at least with the pass rush that you lose with, with Jermaine out. Uh, but I think that some of the, you know, some of the way you replace Jermaine is just internally. And it's not, it's not all at the defensive end position. You know, there's a, if you ever saw the movie Moneyball, uh, the Oakland A's lost Jason Giambi, uh, who was at that point one of the star first basemen in baseball. And they had a team meeting in the offseason. They talked about replacing Giambi. And the, the point that they made was, look, we're not going to replace him by just adding another first baseman. We need to improve other spots as well. And combined, if we improve all the other spots, maybe we can replace his, his production in the aggregate. And I, I think about that when we discuss how the Jets, you know, work around losing Jermaine Johnson because, you know, Reddick could show up. But if Reddick doesn't show up, you know, those defensive end snaps, a lot of them are going to go to guys like Tack McKinley and Brady, Brady McGregor. And frankly, those guys aren't going to play at the level of Jermaine. So one way, one way you work around is just in, you, the other areas play better. And, you know, the Jets have two guys who are first team all pro talents on this defense. And neither of them have played very well so far in the season. Uh, Quinton Williams has not looked like Quinton Williams to this point in the year. And I guess like you, you look at this from the, from glasses, half empty standpoint that, you know, Quinton Williams hasn't played that well, but, you look at it from the glasses half full standpoint is that he's very likely to bounce back. This is a guy who's been a top notch player the last two years, one of the top defensive tackles in the league the last two years. And even before that, a very good defensive tackle, a guy who merited Pro Bowl consideration back in 2020. So it's not like Quinn and Williams was you know, looking bad before the last two seasons before his breakout. Quinn Williams has been a very good player for most of his career. It's reasonable to expect he's going to play much better over the final 15 games than he played over the first two. So, you know, on the defensive line, yeah, I know he doesn't play defensive ends, but you, you know, if you get better defensive tackle play, that makes life much easier on the defensive ends. Sauce Gardner, you know, Sauce Gardner had a rough game on Sunday. I mean, he was beaten a couple of times. You never see Sauce get beat the way he was beaten on Sunday. Um, you would expect he's going to bounce back. You expect he's going to play better. Now, Sauce is, you know, like Sauce's issues this year, a lot of them have been about tackling. And look, Sauce is never going to be a great tackler, but the Jets. Jets don't have sauce because he's a great tackler. Jets have sauce because he's a shut down corner and he you know, did not do a great job shutting down Tennessee, but you know, you expect he's going to bounce back because he's a great player. And I guess like the glasses half full interpretation is that the two, the two guys who are all pro talents on this defense haven't played like all pro talents. And you still lost, you still won the game you were expected to win in the first two. You know, um, we can discuss how the Jets got to this point, but I think most of us before the season had San Francisco penciled in as a loss and Tennessee penciled in as a win. And the Jets were able to get, you know, essentially be at hold serve without their top two guys playing like top guys. Now, again, Quinn and stepping up makes life easier for everybody on the defensive line. And again, you know, like if I get pat, if I get pass rushing production, does it matter if it comes from the defensive end spot or the defensive tackle spot? No. And if Quinn is, you know, Quinn is drawing double teams the way Quinn is, he's drawing attention the way he can, that makes life easier for the guys on the edge. But I think the sauce angle is a little bit different. I think it's just as important though. And I'm going to give you like the reverse example. Last October, the Jets played the Philadelphia Eagles in a game where the Eagles entered undefeated. And the Jets played that game without Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed. They were both injured. Nobody gave the Jets much of a chance. The high-powered Eagles offense against the Jets defense without their top two corners. The Jets not only won that game, they won that game because of their defense. The defense absolutely stifled the Eagles all day long. And the reason was the pass rush. You know, the pass rush allowed the Jets to play Brandon Eccles and Bryce Hall and survive, not just survive, but thrive on, on the defensive side of the ball. So that, that might be a weird example to bring up in the context of the Jets losing you know, their, their best pass rushing defensive end uh, currently on the roster. But the point is that the relationship between the pass rush and the coverage units are connected. And I think one of the things that I liked about, I've liked about the way the Jets have been built the last couple of years is that they've been strong in both areas. 
So they can withstand a hit to, uh, if, if one takes a hit, the other can help cover the difference. So last year when the Jets didn't have great cover guys in there, they had a pass rush that could shut the other team passing game down. Because if you have a ferocious pass rush, the corners don't have to cover as long. The quarterback's got to get rid of the ball quickly or the quarterback ends up on the ground. You don't need to cover all that effectively. The reverse is also true. When you're struggling, uh, when you're struggling to get to the quarterback, you know, when you don't have as much talent on the, on the defensive line, you can turn to your coverage unit because those guys can cover longer. If those guys cover longer, it gives the pass rushers more time to get to the quarterback. Now, remember when the Jets traded for Hassan Reddick? You know, it, it seemed like a move at the time that was, you know, kind of superfluous. It wasn't, didn't seem like a move that was all that essential. And in some ways, I kind of interpreted it as like Sauce Gardner insurance for the reasons, you know, for the reasons I mentioned. That if anything happened to Sauce Gardner, now you have this premium edge rusher who can get to the quarterback and kind of cover for any deficiencies you might have at the corner position. Well, the reverse is also true. Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed and Michael Carter II, these guys are kind of insurance against anything that happens to your pass rush. And the Jets now can lean on the coverage a little bit more. And I still think the defense can hold up effectively. It's the nice thing about it. I've said this. I can't count how many times I've said this over the last three years. But if there are two spots you want to be good at on the NFL on the defensive side of the ball, the defensive line and there's and it's corner because this is very much a passing league. And, of course, look, I'd rather play the run effectively than play the run poorly. And there is a limit. I mean, look, if you play the run the way the Jets did against San Francisco, it's going to be a problem. But one thing that's clear if you look at the statistics in recent years is that there's a much stronger correlation between uh, passing and shutting down the pass and winning than there is between shutting down the run and running and winning. You know, the teams that the teams that throw the ball well and stop the and stop the pass effectively much more likely to win than the teams that run the ball effectively and stop the run effectively. And the two ways you do that are getting after the quarterback and covering. Now, ideally, in an ideal world, you have both of them. And I think you know, one of the reasons the Jets' defense has been so special the last couple of years is that they've been able to do both effectively. They've been able to get after the quarterback, and they've been able to cover. But if you have one really strong, if you if you can do one of these really strong of the two, you still have a shot. You still can play defense very effectively. So Jets have the talent, even if it's not all the defensive end position. Now again, like Will McDonald stepping up would help. This Reddick situation resolve getting resolved would be would help. But even if those things don't happen, the Jets have pieces elsewhere that can help kind of compensate make up the difference so it's not all going to be at the defensive end position some of it's going to be quinn and williams stepping up and some of it's going to be just we're going to lean on the corners and one way you lean on the corners maybe you change the scheme a little bit there's another way the jets can help out their pass rush without jermaine johnson and it requires them to trust their corners we'll talk about that more as we continue here on this tuesday edition of locked on jets Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. You know, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Well, now we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday, mark, Sunday out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Now we know the Jets played Thursday night football this week. That means your Sunday's open. Do you really want to have to depend on Fox and CBS to show you which show you the games they choose? You probably want to watch your own game. You want you want to choose which game you you want to watch. And NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV is the place to get it. And again, on FanDuel, a five dollar bet gets you a three week free trial. Jets currently six and a half point favorites over New England on FanDuel. So put some money down on the Jets, win, and want enjoy the games, whichever game you want to watch this Sunday on YouTube and YouTube TV. Watching NFL Sunday Ticket, just go to FanDuel.com, download America's number one sports book. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Tuesday. We're talking about the Jets losing Jermaine Johnson for the season. Some bad injury news the team received on Monday. They lose the Pro Bowl defensive end for the year with a torn Achilles tendon. But there are ways for the Jets to work around it. We've been discussing on the show. Some of them uh, involve the defensive end position, maybe getting the guy you traded for into the lineup, uh, Hassan Reddick. Maybe it's the first round pick from a year ago, Will McDonald stepping up after a three-sack game. And then there are other guys who can step up. Jets can maybe lean on their corners a little bit more, as we discussed in the last segment. Well, one of the ways the Jets can lean on their corners more is schematic. And we know that Robert Sala, in an ideal world, doesn't like to blitz a lot. Jets had the second lowest blitz rate in the NFL a year ago. And look, when you can get to the quarterback rushing four guys, as the Jets were able to consistently a year ago, Jets had one of the highest pressure rates in the league, despite having the second lowest blitz rate. It makes sense to do. But you know, going back to the relationship we're talking about between your coverage units and your pass rushers, when you have strong coverage guys, 
you can lean on them. You know, you, you can schematically put more stress on them. Jets didn't need to a year ago because they, they were so effective at getting to the quarterback just rushing four. But they always had this in reserve. They always had the ability to maybe trust these corners to hold up one on one. Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, Michael Carter, the second. You know, this is the top trio corner trio in the league. Now, maybe it hasn't looked like it so far this the, the early part of the season. Uh, at points, they, they've had issues, and DJ Reed, of course, is you know missed Sunday's game with an injury. But this is still a very, very talented group of corners that the Jets have. And I, I always felt like last year that you know, like they had like the the in case of emergency break glass scenario where they could blitz more. And Robert Sala, for all of his issues as a head coach, and I'm very critical, and you know, I still have questions about whether Sala is actually you know that good of a head coach. I think even his biggest critic would admit that he's a very, very good defensive architect. And if you look at Salah historically, he's been willing to adapt to the players he's had. You know, if you look at 2020, where the 49ers, he was the 49ers defensive coordinator that year. They suffered a million injuries. It actually started in a week two game against the Jets where they lost Nick Bosa for the season. And the, that was the infamous uh, the infamous MetLife turf game where you know, the 49ers may have been the first team to question the turf at MetLife Stadium. Um, and the 49ers lost Bosa. They lost a lot of their key guys that year. And they didn't have as much talent on the defensive line. The Niners ended up having a pretty high blitz rate that year. 2021, Robert Sala takes over as Jets head coach, inherits a team that frankly doesn't have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball or the offensive side of the ball, but that, that's a different story. The Jets go out and sign Carl Lawson in free agency. Lawson's supposed to be kind of like the, the key pass rusher. Lawson suffers an injury in a uh, preseason practice, a training camp practice against the joint practice with the Green Bay Packers. So the Jets end up with really no quality pass rushers at the defensive end spot. They had a pretty high blitz rate that year. Then the Jets start adding pass rushers you know they get they they start bringing in guys in 2022 you know bryce huff starts emerging john franklin myers emerges um jermaine johnson gets drafted so quinn and williams has his breakout season suddenly the jets don't need to blitz so much 2022 2023 they don't blitz a lot but the option is there and if the jets have issues with rushing the passer this is something that you know even with jermaine may have been an issue because again you you know you still don't have reddick at this point um it was. I think this was something that was always on the table for the Jets, and it's something Salah has shown himself willing to do. Is that Salah is not, a, and this is one of the things I think coaches have a lot big issue with in the NFL. I think there are some coaches who are just so set in their scheme that they're going to run things how they want to run it, no matter what. Adam Gase was like the ultimate example of this. Didn't matter what the player, what players he had, Adam Gase was going to run things the Adam Gase way on offense, and that's one of the reasons his offense did not work without Peyton Manning. Um, Salah clearly has a way he prefers to run his team on the defensive side of the ball. Clearly, he would like a, a robust four-man pass rush, four ferocious pass rushers who he can send it, send at the quarterback nonstop and play coverage in the back of the defense. But he also has shown a willingness to acknowledge when he doesn't have that. And even in 2021, when the Jets really didn't have corners, he was still willing to blitz a lot. He was willing to leave his corners on an island, even when they were, you know, Bryce Hall and Brandon Eccles. Well, now he's got Sauce Gardner, and you know, hopefully DJ Reed's back in the lineup soon, and Michael Carter the second. He's got guys who can cover. I mean, look, there's a reason the Jets drafted, drafted Sauce Gardner fourth overall. There's a reason the Jets just, just, just gave Michael Carter the second a big contract extension. DJ Reed's been an excellent corner his entire tenure with the Jets. They invest a lot in these guys. You don't invest a lot in corners if you don't think they can hold up one-on-one. -on -one. So the Jets can send more blitzes. They can trust these guys on an island. They didn't need to do that the last couple of years because they could get to the quarterback so frequently. But it's always been at their disposal. Again, this is one of the things that's nice about having the flexibility to have both a good defensive line and a good corner group is that if you take a hit to one of the units, and right now the Jets have taken a hit to the defensive line, you can lean on the corners a little bit more. You can get more production out of them. You can ask, you can put more on their plates, and they should be able to handle it. And you know, like one of the things I was talking about last week, after the Jets got beat by the 49ers, um, you know, they got run all over. And one of the things that concerned me about that game was that there's really no way to scheme around a team that can't stop the run. When your defense can't stop the run, it's tough to scheme around that. There really are only so many schematic fixes you can make for that. When you lose a top pass rusher, there are schematic fixes, and one of them is blitzing more. The question with the blitz, with a more frequent uh, assortment of blitzes, is do you trust the guys in the back of your defense? And for the Jets, I think that question should be an unequivocal yes. I mean, it's tough, for, it's tough to find a better group of corners than the Jets have right now. So the Jets, you know, the, I think one of the ways you, you work around Jermaine, it's not, it's not going to be through Tack McKinley playing like Jermaine. It's not going to be through Brandon McGregor playing like Jermaine. 
It means other guys are going to have to take up more of the slack. Other guys have other positions. And, you know, you're not going to be as good at defensive end, but if you get more production out of some of the other guys, you can make up for the loss of a Jermaine Johnson. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Lockdown Jets podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoyed the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube and enjoyed the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out. It helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Enjoy your Tuesday, everybody. Send in your mailbag questions. Tomorrow we'll do our weekly Wednesday mailbag show. Talk to you then.